Welcome back to this early Elizabethan England revision series. Today we're focusing on key topic three, Elizabethan society in the age of exploration between 1558 and 1588. Our key content today will focus on part four, which is Raleigh and the colonization of Virginia. In terms of the content of this PowerPoint will go through today is that we'll be looking at the significance of Raleigh in the attempted colonization of Virginia and its reasons for its failures. We'll also be looking at a couple of exam questions that could well come up in the 2023 examination series. So first off, let's start off with the significance of Walter Raleigh. So he was significant in the sense that he investigated, organized and raised funds for the establishment of a new colony in Virginia, which is on the eastern seaboard of the United States. There was the promotion of the voyage and the persuasion of people to leave England and to settle in Virginia. Um, this should not be confused with the battle for independence in the United States, where people left to get away from the monarch. This is more to do with the idea of people trying to find their fortune and to settle for a new life elsewhere. Whilst colonizing Virginia, he appointed the governor, a governor of Virginia who ruled in his place when he was um, traveling back to England. And he also developed a blueprint, which was later on used for other English colonizations. Essentially what we're looking at here is we're looking at that link between the colonization of Virginia and the further development of the British Empire later on in the 17th and 18th century. So let's have a look at Raleigh's original plans for Virginia. In terms of the ships and the timings, he sent five ships to Virginia, the Tiger, the Roebuck, the Lion, the Dorothy and the Elizabeth, with the Tiger being the largest of the ship and all the perishable goods were placed into one particular ship, which was the Tiger. Um, there was an issue in one of the exam papers in 2019 where the tiger came up as one of the stimulus bullet points. Um, so if this question comes up again, which it is likely to, um, then we need to make sure that we know this is our kind of like our, our level four knowledge. Um, so the ships left England essentially too late in the year to be able to plant some of the seeds that were stored on the tiger itself and therefore there wouldn't have been enough time for crops to grow um, and for them to feed the colonists throughout the winter for them to actually survive. In terms of the plans for finding the right people, um, it's quite hard to persuade people to go on a three to four thousand mile journey and to develop a new life in an area that is completely and utterly unknown. Um, so Raleigh basically wanted 300 colonists to go with him. Um, he ended up only having 107, all of which are men, um, which for the astute amongst you would suggest that this colony is not necessarily gonna grow particularly rapidly because there's, there's, no, there's, no, females, uh, there's no females on the colony at the very, very start. Um, the, the plans were to have a range of occup occupations, um, so out of the 107, around about half, so we're talking about 50 being soldiers. Um, you've then got uh, landowners that would provide some form of funding, farmers to work the land, and artisans, which are people that would take the produce taken from the farms and to make them into something, so they'd be people like uh, brewers or, uh, or bakers and so forth. Um, so of the 107, the reason why those people went on to the uh, exploration with uh, with Raleigh or the colonization with Raleigh is that they believed that they were going to make an absolute fortune by starting off their own colony because they would have essentially a, a bit of a monopoly on the, on the business, on the business model of the colonization. Um, so if you've only got a few farmers within a within a particularly local area then they are going to get all of the money from that local area uh, the other plan was to appoint certain leaders um, so Raleigh wasn't allowed to lead the expedition under Elizabeth's orders um, and that's purely because of Raleigh's significance as an individual uh, and his importance to Elizabeth um, especially with regards to um, 
his expertise in the event that Spain attacked England. Uh, and just remember, we're talking about the 1570s, early 1580s. So relations with Spain at this point are quite tense and a war is inevitable and it is likely to come soon, but we're not entirely sure at this point when it's going to be. So therefore, he appointed someone called Grenville, um, who was an experienced sailor, but, uh, but was a little bit hostile and a bit hot-headed. Um, he also appointed a, a, a guy called Lane, who was an expert on fort building, um, but the two didn't get on. Um, so him, uh, so Lane and Grenville, Grenville didn't, didn't really get on very well. And a guy called Harriet, who was the kind of the, the, the mediator, the go-between bet uh, between the English colonists and the Algonquians, um, and also our understood navigation. Um, another key thing with regards to the Algonquians, um, that was the that was the second bullet point on this particular question in 2019, um, and it was a mistake that a huge amount of candidates made um, in this particular examination, in the sense that they didn't know what the tiger was and they didn't know who the Algonquians were, and so you got quite a number of answers that were kind of guessing and not really knowing who these people were. So, so for all intents and purposes, it is that the tiger is the largest ship in uh, Raleigh's uh, colonization voyage and the Algonquians are the inhabitants of Virginia that they meet with and they converse with and that they ha ultimately have issues with which we'll look at later on. So if you get a question on the significance of the colonization of Virginia, this is normally going to come up as a 16 mark question. Um, there are two key elements to, um, to this area. Uh, one is to do the idea of Spain. Um, so the, the colonization of Virginia ultimately undermines Spain in a couple of different ways. So it provides England with a base to attack Spanish colonies in the New World. Just a reminder that Spain pretty much controls uh, most of what, what is now South America at this point, and also most of the Caribbean and Florida. Um, so therefore, Virginia is quite a strategic position to be able to store kind of military, like have a military base there, store a military naval base there, and uh, then be able to attack the New World from, from Virginia. Um, that's essentially in the short term. The longer term, um, there's then that rivalry with Spain's overseas empires and then to undermine its influence in the new world, not just by attacking it, but by also having sort of like a, a business and economic base there. And also offers the Native Americans, for example, the Algonquians, the choice between English and Spanish settlers to trade with. So you've got that, again, you've got that commercial rivalry. Um, so in terms of aspects of knowledge, um, you can have undermining of Spain, but in two separate ideas, undermining Spain in a military sense, in that uh, the English will be able to have a strategic base to attack Spain and, the, and, and Spanish colonies in the future. And then you've got that economic rivalry. So this will be a separate point and a separate paragraph with regards to the rivalry of the overseas empire and the offering of uh, a choice between English and Spanish settlers for Native Americans. On the other side is you've got economic benefits with regards to the significance of colonization. So this is economic benefits for England. Um, so many of the items supplied by Southern Europe could be provided by Virginia. And so therefore, what that means is, is if England's got a base where those supplies are, is that they don't have to pay things like tariffs or um, extortionate fees to be able to get those goods from Southern Europe. A re again, a reminder is that our relationships with the rest of Europe is not particularly great <laughs> uh, during the Elizabethan era. So having um, those sort of raw materials or, 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 or materials that you can or produce you can purchase from Virginia, um, you don't you won't have tariffs, you won't have as much as much fee as much fees to pay, and so therefore there's an economic benefit to England. <clears throat> the other key thing uh, that we found in Virginia was um there were two things actually so tobacco um so the idea of, of of like what you put into cigarettes and what we've been smoking for the last 400 years that comes from 
Virginia. That was what that's one of the things that Riley brought back. Um, and the other thing that he brought back with him that we that was a luxury at the time was sugarcane. Um, so that again, there's kind of a link there with regards to um, smuggling in crime and punishment. So you've 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 got you've got quite key kind of what are at that what were those at that point luxury items uh, that kind of led to smuggling later on. Okay, so this question could be a twelve or a sixteen mark question in terms of why um, the colonization of Virginia failed. So. We'll start at the beginning with regards to the voyage itself. Um, so there's that ship, the Tiger, again. Um, so there were issues with the voyage before they even got to Virginia. Um, it was damaged. The Tiger was damaged in rough seas and the supplies on the Tiger, not all of them, but quite a significant amount were damaged in, in rough seas. There's also, not necessarily through rough seas, but also with regards to illness, that weakened the colonists, so therefore they couldn't really get straight to work as they um, as, as they got to, to Virginia. And if you go all the way back to to kind of the, the, the planning stage, is that the timing of setting off on the voyage came too late, and so therefore the crops that were brought on the voyage wouldn't have had enough time to take, to grow, and to be harvested in order to, to help the colonists survive through the winter. Um, the second key point is to do the colonists themselves. So again, we only had 107, um, but there was essentially there were too many soldiers, uh, and there wasn't enough of the of people with the right skill set. So with regards to the soldiers, they weren't able to they they didn't know how to farm the land. Um, so they therefore they are completely utterly useless if they're not being attacked. Then they're not really doing anything. Those that were the landowners, the gentlemen, they didn't want to farm, they didn't want to work the land because they went out to, they were under the impression they were going to own the land and therefore not have to do really much work with it. They were just going to fund it. And the farmers, all the work was then put on them. And if you are someone that wanted to go out and make your fortune and, and get a better life, uh, you didn't really sign up for that. Um, so... We've, essentially, there weren't enough farmers uh, or there weren't enough people working the land. So therefore, that has an impact on what the artisans can do. So the brewers and the bakers weren't able to make their produce because there wasn't enough raw materials being produced by the farmers and by others in order for them to make it. And therefore, as a result of that, um, the colonists were, were, were very reliant on the Algonquians, on the Native Americans to survive. Um, and again, they've been sold this dream of owning your land and making a fortune, and they weren't really prepared for the idea of the hardship um, and thinking about rewards in the long term rather than a quick fix. Let's make money. Let's get a quick win here. And so the last one is then the Native American resistance. So at the beginning, the Algonquians were very helpful to the uh, to the English colonists. Um, but those initial relationships soured quite quickly. Um, and there, there were there were a number of different a number of different issues here with regards to asking for food, um, continuously asking for food, and then becoming a little bit more hostile against the Algonquian people. Um, Another key issue here was that when you bring a new set of people into a new area is that the English colonists brought diseases from England um, and the Algonquian people hadn't actually been exposed to those diseases. And so therefore what then tends to happen is that the Algonquians would get, say, for example, a, what we classify as a common cold. They would get it a, a hell of a lot worse because they haven't been exposed to those germs before and they haven't got the um, the antibodies to kind of fight that off. So a typical 16 mark question that could come up in the 2023 series is a statement such as inexperienced colonists were the main reason for the failure of the colonization of Virginia. So Virginia hasn't come up 
as of uh, the time of writing in 2023, the colonization of Virginia hasn't come up as a 16 mark question. It has come up as a 12 mark question. But remember, with a 16 mark question, you have to think about the idea of a criteria, a criteria in your introduction to then link back the idea of what is the main reason, not just to talk about a list of reasons. So the criteria in this particular question is the one that most directly lead, led to its failure. That's that's the criteria. It's a nice, easy criteria to look for. So factor one is a complete repeat of what we said in the previous slide, the inexperience of the colonists. Factor two is the issues on the voyage itself. And factor three is Native American resistance. So if we were to evaluate which one is the main reason, since we've gone through the reasons already, we'll look at the idea of the main reasons for the um, for the failure. So we can probably discount factor three as being the main reason um, because the relationship soured over a period of time and the Algonquian people were not resistant at the start. Um, you could talk about the idea of the issues on the voyage, voyage being the main reason um, and the reason why it directly leads to the failure of the colonization is that poor planning, poor timing and circumstance with regards to the with regards to the rough seas put the colonists in a bit of a position to start with, a bad position to start with. So if you start off badly, you're more likely to fail. Um, however, it's a strong argument to say that the inexperience of the colonists are the, are the ones that directly led to the failure because they weren't willing to work hard to make it work. And if you're not willing to put the effort in, much the same as uh, you guys listening with regards to your exams, if you're not willing to prepare for, for exams, then you are more likely to directly lead to, to failure on, on that on that aspect. OK, so if we was to put it into the idea of an order, it's the order of what it is on the screen. So in experience of the colonists, it can be argued to be the strongest argument. The next strongest argument is to do with the idea of the issues on the voyage. And then the third, essentially the weakest argument there being the main reason is Native American resistance. So to summarize what we've gone through in this video today, um, so we've got the idea of Raleigh be, being behind two attempts to establish an English colony in Virginia. Uh, the colonies in Roanoke failed due to inexperienced suitability of colonists and resistance of local American Indians. The conditions in Virginia were much harsher than the colonists expected and therefore they became, A, they became ill over it and B, there wasn't the particular conditions to be able to grow, uh, to grow crops. And many of the 1585 colonists did not cooperate with each other. The last thing to mention is that the English were very dependent on the local American Indians to survive. And the local Indian chief did not trust the English and turned hostile later on. So that's the end of this particular revision video. Um, there are more there are more to come between now and the 2023 exams next week so don't forget to like and subscribe to get notifications on when those videos are uploaded